Today we're checking out Adolf Silver's YT Chuez, which has been completely custom built to suit the frankly insane way that he rides. Now, if you're not aware, Adolf is one of the most progressive and gnarliest riders out there, and he specializes in doing this sort of stuff. As with all pro bikes, we're gonna check out the frame first because, uh, well, that's what everything hangs off. Now, Adolf uses a YT Chuez and it's a size small, but it's a little bit different to the regular ones out there. Okay, so this is the carbon frame, the high modulus carbon with 200 millimeters of suspension. It's got a four bar system, so it is very active on the rear end. Although he runs his slightly different, we'll get to that in a minute. The back end on his one though is actually a 26 inch custom for him, specifically for the style of riding that he chooses. It's got a 27 and a half inch front wheel, 26 inch wheel on the back, so it's super tough. And to be fair, it needs to be underneath him. Hey guys, what's up? It's Adolf Seba here with Audi 9s, and I'm gonna show you my YT2S bike check. So basically it's a small frame with a custom 26 rear end. Uh, then we have some all-in suspension, super stiff for jumping. Um, my fork is running 250 on the bottom chamber and 210 on the top chamber. And my shock is at uh, 300, I think. Uh, he is running an Olin's 38 fork. Of course, got the 38 mil stanchions on there with adjustable compression and that sort of stuff. But just to put things into perspective, a rider of 70 kilograms in weight, if you're looking for 20% sag, which is actually not much sag, a lot of riders on that sort of fork, you want 30% sag. So for 20% sag, you'll put 210 pounds in the bottom chamber, so he's running 250, and they'll put 95 in the top, and he's got 210 in there. So you can imagine how hard that fork feels, insane. And he's using all that travel all the time. Like we've seen before with Brendan Fairclough's bike, running compression on these sorts of bikes is really important. Now, a lot of people might think that you just want to crank on the rebound, but then you do lose feel. Uh, people think that in order to you know, not get kicked, you need to put loads of rebound on, but actually you need to match this with compression. You need to have a lot of compression because the way that shocks work, you need to, you need to absorb that energy. It's stored energy, basically. So if you can slow that energy down under impact, there's gonna be less energy coming out in a rebound. So that's basically how he's running his bike. Don't want that bike to kick up the ass when you're hitting jumps as big as this. Okay, up to the handlebars and the cockpit area of the bike. As you can see, it's got a very high front end on here. Um, it's not just deceiving angles here. So the front end on here, he's got a 35 millimeter high bar from reverse components, and it's cut down to 770 millimeters. That's quite precise. Uh, he's also using a 35 mil stem, and underneath it, he has two five millimeter spacers and one 10 millimeter spacer. That's quite a lot. That's like a high, high front end, but, Kind of makes sense when you see how hard he has to pull up on the front end of this thing. And he's got the sensors grips on there and he's also running the British made Hope Tech V3 brakes on his bike. So they are super cool CNC machine brakes made here in England. And look at those lever reach and bite adjustment points as well. The dials on these are really, really nice. In fact, probably the nicest out there. Uh, not used them for a long time actually, but Hope do make some stunning equipment. Uh, the cockpit looks really clean on here. You might notice there's no drop of ice lever, of course, but there's also no gear lever. Then we have uh, the single speed, perfect for free riding, because we don't need, need the gears. Now, as far as transmission goes, uh, well, it is somewhat lacking. Gears are not needed with the way that Adolf Silver rides this bike. And in fact, the most important thing is making sure that that bike, when he crashes it, or when he abandons ship in midair, trying something like a body varial or something crazy, um, it needs to be able to get back on the bike again. And what use is it if you're just gonna be smashing rear mechs all the time? So nothing on here, single speed setup. He's running Hope cranks on here. So these are beautiful Hope Evo cranks. He's also running the Hope F20 pedals. Uh, often overlooked, but a very aggressive pedal. They're available in loads of colors. Uh, I mean, they'll make a right of Messier Lex. It's a small brand and they're making stuff that's immensely high quality. So really nice to see actually on Adolf's bike. Uh, so he's got an SB1 chain tension there. I'm not too familiar with these. I know that Blake's looked at one of these before. It's got an adjustable clutch on there. So you can have them near enough silent. They're gonna be put so much tension on. Of course, 
With the chain tension on a downhill bike, you've got the pivot point to play with, so you are gonna get chain growth, whatever the bike is, so it couldn't just be rigid, like other style chain tension as you get in the single speed world, has to actually allow for that. So having a clutch on it means it's gonna be super, super, uh, well, powerful clutch essentially, so it's gonna be really silent in use, and it's got heavy duty single speed chain on there that matches in quite well. So then we are, I have an offset headset, a uh, one degree offset. So he's actually running a works components headset in there, that's a British company, and he's got a one degree um, angle adjustment on it. Now it looks, he hasn't actually said it, it looks like he's actually steepening it, which would be reflective of what all the other sort of freestyle riders are actually doing at the moment. Brendan actually runs his bike in the steeper setting, so it reflects that again with what Adolf's doing, especially by the back end of the bike being lower with that 26 inch wheel, even though he's got the shorter back end on there to actually suit that. Uh, now the wheels are quite cool, so up front he's got a 27 and a half inch wheel, it's a Stans Flow. Now the Stans Flow itself, if you look at the details here, it's got a 29mm internal rim width, a 33mm external, so it's a really wide rim. And he's actually got a matching one on the back in a different size, which is quite cool. Now the tyres are Hutchinson and Griffiths racing tyres. Now, not ridden these, but these things look really good. They're triple compound tires. So the base of these tires is 94A. So the idea is you've got a nice hard base on the tire to give it the support for the sticky rubber that goes on the top. And it's got 50 on the top and it's got 42 on the sides. Actually, it might be 40 on the sides. Uh, either way, it's very soft shoulders for grip and it's got slightly softer top, but you don't want it to be tearing up and running out when you're under braking. Of course, you tear knobbles off if it's too soft there. Now, he sets them up tubeless with stands and no tubes sealing in there, and it's got 200 mil disc rotors on there. Now, out back, similar thing, except it's got a 26 inch stands flow wheel. Now, this pleases me immensely to see that the fact the stands are still making all wheel sizes. In fact, you know, there's a lot of manufacturers that are, it's just be a slightly more limited range, uh, perhaps not so uh, many options in the higher end wheels. So really good to see, again, that 33 mil rim width, uh, 29 mil internal, set up tubeless, the exact same tire on the rear, but in 26. And again, really cool to see a tire of that quality in 26 inch, so if you're looking for a 26, um, and you're in the market for one and you want a triple compound that's heavy duty. Now uh, Griffiths looks like a pretty good tire to me. Uh, by the way, the tire, the casing on those is 66 TPI, so that's a proper heavy duty tire. If you think they go, the lower TPI means the casing essentially is thicker because the, the threads are much thicker. It doesn't mean there's suddenly loads of holes between them. You get 120 TPI and you get 60 TPI, basically. They're two common options in bike tires. The 120 means the threads are very fine. And what that means is the casing will be really supple. Uh, so fantastic for a lightweight tire, but not so good for a super, super heavyweight tire like that one. So 66 TPI, I think it's gonna be like a tank, that tire, awesome. Uh, as far as finishing kit goes, he's got reverse components, dirt jump saddle. As you can see, he's got an inline seat post, so it's super strong load. There's no movement, bang, that goes on. That's gonna laugh off all the crashes and stuff. Uh, he's running the nose quite high on the saddle, and the saddle's actually a bit higher than I thought it might be. Uh, perhaps he pinches it between his knees uh, in some of the tricks. I'd imagine it does give some sort of stability. We saw earlier in that body varial, he actually, as he spins around on the bike, even though he didn't land that one, uh, it looks like he reaches for the saddle as a way of sort of stopping himself spinning. Again, I mean that bike is built for strength, it's not built for miles sat down after all. Well there we go, that is Adolf Silva's completely custom bike, a YT Chuez, 27 and a half on the front, custom 26 inch back end, really sick build actually, really like what he's done with that. Uh, what do you think of Adolf's bike? Let us know in those comments underneath. And more importantly, what do you think of him as a rider? I think that guy is a loco, um, in the best possible way. Dude, you are insane, I love your style on a bike. Um, hopefully you get to see this at some point, maybe you can share it around if you do. Uh, thanks for watching our video, everyone, and thank you to Adolf Silva for showing us your bike at the Audi competition. Uh, look out for more cool stuff coming soon.